Kevin Douglas Walters was an iconic figure in Australian cricket. A batsman adored as the working class hero for his free flowing scoring and his match winning abilities. Beautiful shot for four. Well, he's gone for it, and this time it's over the top. Driven down the ground, that'll be four. Beautifully timed. He was special, and I think that's a very good, good word because um, Doug was unique. Uh, incredible personality, incredible um, talent, precocious talent as a, as a young man. Um, but he, he remained a precocious talent. I don't think uh, the thing that I probably admire most about Doug was he never changed. Oh, that's Walters at his best, giving himself some room, cutting square. One of those guys that uh, could win you a cricket match just off his own bat. And there's not many guys you can talk about in that vein. He scored his runs very, very quickly. Um, hundreds in sessions, uh, that type of uh, player that can do that. Uh, so if you've got players of that calibre that come in and, and change the course of a game just in a session, you know, they're match winners. For Lord Walters, and it's Dougie Walters' half century. Had three innings that I do remember very well. Um, one in Perth, where he got 100 in a session against England and won us a test match. Uh, turned that test match around. He got 100 in a session in Auckland against New Zealand on a wet wicket um, that won us a test match. And he got 100 in a session in Jamaica against the West Indies that won us a test match. The thing with Doug was that when he got runs, he got them so quick that you had time to win the game. That's a square cut by Walters, and that's really playing to his strength. He said it yesterday, he loves that shot. The ball racing away down towards the boundary, and that'll be four. So a good start to Walters, and that's Walters' half century. Well, I guess that was the way they'd always played cricket. I mean, even on the back, in the back yard or on the back veranda, the side veranda at home. I mean, I I was always getting into trouble for breaking windows and, and playing, yeah, unorthodox shots. And I, we used to play our test matches if... if uh, someone come in that was a left-hander, you had to bat left-handed. Or uh, if you wanted to bowl like Sir Garfield Sobers, you had to bowl left-handed and all that sort of thing. And I guess, uh, yeah, we, we invented a few shots because uh, we didn't have the full boundaries and where we played our cricket. <laughs> I guess I, I favour the onside shots uh, a lot because that's where we had to score most of our runs. We, we didn't have any cover drives. We were only going into the walls or into the windows when you're hitting through the covers. Or, playing cut shots and those sort of things in those days. But, yeah, I, I think that sort of stayed with me, and I'm, I'm not sorry that it, that it did stay with me, even into the test arena. I mean, it didn't always come off. But uh, when it did come off, I mean, I'd, I'd prefer to go out there and play my own game, and uh, there were occasions where you did have to That's play a different, a different role, and yeah, it's not as enjoyable. There goes the ball. Hit with the spin by Walters away through the mid-wicket area. That's the one, and it's over the top of Gully and down towards the third man boundary, and that'll be four. Well, one of the things about Doug Walters is that he might get out there now and again, but my goodness, when he hits them, they stay hit. That test match where he scored the 100 in the session, I got out um, just a few minutes before afternoon tea, and Doug had to go in, and that was really a no-no. I mean, you just didn't get out right on a break it, you know, and, ask, and expect someone to have to come and bat for a few minutes before a, a break. I didn't say anything to Doug as we, as we crossed because, I mean, I was, I was disappointed and upset with myself for a start and sorry that I'd dropped Doug in it. Um, he came off a few minutes later for afternoon tea and I, I went up to him and I said, sorry, mate, I, you know, I'm getting out like that. But I did it so you could just get your eye in and make 100 in the session. And I mean, I was only joking. But I think it just sort of triggered something in Doug's mind not straight away, but I think later in the session, when he was getting up around 80, 90 runs, he, he said later on that uh, you know, the, the words came back to him that yeah, maybe I can get 100 in the session. And he required six off the last ball. Bob Willis ran in and bowled a bouncer, which um, perhaps wasn't the right thing to do. And Doug hit it straight over square leg for six to bring up his 100 off the last ball of the session. I knew he had two guys on the backward square boundary, one at fine leg, one behind square. So, uh, as luck had it, I mean, uh, it was the last ball and uh, the ball hit the bat in the right spot and I went between those two guys back with a square and 
and just over the boundary rope. So uh, I was pretty happy with that. I knew it was the last ball of the, the day and I went running off thinking that the boys might have the top off a, a couple of bottles by the time I arrived in the room. Yeah, he was a great practical joker himself and it seemed a good idea at the time uh, that if we weren't in the dressing rooms, uh, then you know, it was our practical joke, the team getting back at him. Uh, he was batting with Ross Edwards and uh, you know, when they walked back in, instead of you know, everyone patting him on the back mat, there was deathly silence. So we were all in the showers and, and when we came back out, I mean, you could have guessed this, but Dougie was there having a smoke and having a beer and basically just uh, sweating, mopping the sweat from his brow. And it was as if nothing had happened. And uh, we all laughed at him and, you know, patted him on the back. But it was, uh, it was typical Doug Walters. Fine shot by Walters. Through the gap and racing away to the boundary. Well, it's a dangerous sign for New Zealand. First real effort by Walters and it went screaming through extra cover. Drive and again through the gap, beautifully placed. And right off the middle of the bat, that ball smashing into the boundary. It shouldn't have been under it. Well, they had this uh, experimental rule in this year. In Australia were playing New Zealand, the MCG, 1980. Um, saying that fast bowlers couldn't bowl short pitch balls to blokes who couldn't bat. Well, I think I was on 68 when the ninth wicket fell. And in walked a fellow who wasn't renowned for his batting. In fact, a, a couple of years earlier, he'd just been through an entire tour of England without scoring one run. And as I say, that the, the, the groundsman didn't have a lot of faith in him because the heavy roller was inching in behind him as he was on his way out to bat. Well, Jim Higgs was his name, and he's on strike. Lance Cairns bowls in a short pitch ball. Higgsy puts his hands above his head and gloves the ball straight through the wicket. Keeper. Jim Higgs is out. He's called a no ball. Dear, oh dear, the New Zealanders are leaving. A, a call from Robin Bale. They should be intimidating the batsman. Well, 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 I don't know. Well, I just walked off the, the ground and I'm about 20 yards off the square and I hear Robin Bale, the umpire, call no ball. I turned back to Robin. I said, what was that for? He said, Doug, it's, the, it's ex, uh, the experimental law we have in this year. Fast bowlers can't bowl short pitch balls to blokes who can't bat. I said, I know he can't bat, but are you calling him a fast bowler? <laughs> well, they allowed Iggsy to bat on. And as I say, he found the form that he'd been lacking for the previous nine or ten seasons. And he's nicked it and it's gone straight between the two slips. Well, uh, certainly making life very hard for Cairns. And he's had a go at it, and he's hit it through. It's a great shot, and it's 100. A magnificent shot by Doug Walters to bring up his century. And my goodness, well played, Doug Walters, but a lot of credit too to Jim Higgs. And uh, a little acknowledgement there from Doug Walters as he walked past Higgs, saying, thanks, mate. And the crowd up on their feet, cheering their hero. What a magnificent knock, and uh, a great way to get that 100. A beautiful cover drop. Field very well spread. What's him? I was the one that got out, I think for 170 or somewhere around that. There was no doubt about my dismissal. I'm walking off the MCG, halfway off, and I hear footsteps thumping behind me. I turn back and I see Higgsy coming. I think he's done it in a safe well play. Not Jimmy. He comes up, he slaps you on the shoulder. He said, hey, I done the right thing by you. He said, you could have stuck around till I got mine. <laughs> so, a huge cheer for Doug Walters as he comes in, and I tell you, Jim Higgs deserves... A lot of applause as well. A great knock. His first century in four years. Rodney Mar